Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to this morning's worship service. We do have some special music this morning with the, the bell choir, if you will, and, uh, and as I mentioned to the congregation a moment ago, I'll be moving the camera around, so it's going to be a little different. There's going to be some different pattern of things happening today, um, but just a few quick announcements. We will, uh, this past week, we've been meeting for breakfast at the diner over here at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. This past Wednesday, there were some complications, of course, around COVID and complications that go with that as to why he wasn't open, but he is open again. So I'm hoping we'll be able to have a nice bowl of warm grits there on Wednesday morning. <laughs> uh, then, of course, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we will have uh, the Bible study downstairs in the fireside room, and we're also doing that on Zoom. So you should have that Zoom link available in your uh, email that you're getting. And if you don't get it, just let me know and I'll, I'll find a way to get it to you. Let's see. Alan already made his announcements, and I believe we have an announcement. Come on, uh, yeah, she's gonna. <laughs> and uh, just just for the benefit of everyone, you know, you might be wondering why I'm over here without my mask and they, I'm asking them to keep theirs on. It's because multiple people are at that podium while I kind of get this one all to myself, so I'm special that way. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning. Those of you that don't know me, I'm Carolyn Longwell, and I'm on the committee with Fellowship and Outreach. And one of the things, I'm going to step out here so you can see this. How many of you remember this t-shirt? All right. <laughs> Those that remember it, remember it was 10 years ago that we did these, and it was in honor of our 210th anniversary. Uh, also, for size, why should you to wonder, I have to give you a new t-shirt. And I've got to step out here to show you, though. So you still hear me? No. Okay. No, I'll try to speak a little louder. The new T-shirt is a royal blue. This is a picture on the front, and these are all, there's 15 of these order blanks underneath, and if we ran out, take one. New logo on the front, new logo on the back, royal blue, if they can get them. Right now, as you know, with a lot of things, supplies are limited, but they said they will try to honor that. Going to have a short sleeve and a long sleeve model. The long sleeve's not on here. And this year we're going to be doing what they call a polo shirt, a golf shirt. And that will have the logo on the sleeve and on the breast pocket. Size-wise, people wonder what do I what size do I order? And there's adult sizes of children. The children's are small, medium, and large. They don't go by 8, 10, 6, that type of stuff. The adults, whatever. It's a unisex size, so whatever you would order in your normal size, order that. Just to give you an idea, this is a medium, and this is a poly cotton, so it, it doesn't shrink. But that's a medium, so you can see, and I normally would wear a small, but I got, I don't know, wait a little more than 10 years ago. So, <laughs> anyhow, uh, so we'll pass these around. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. They were able to give us almost the exact same price as 10 years ago at the printery over in Auburn, so they are very, good to work with and we had a good good thing with them. Um, some of them are blend, you have a choice of blend or 100% cotton and I know some people like one, some like the other, so put it down and we will do that. On the youth, it's only the 50-50 blend, but everything else you can do, I'm sorry, the polo shirt is only the 50-50 blend, but the t-shirts you can do that. Any questions on that? Turn them into the office we have that, oh, I almost forgot. This Sunday and next Sunday, we will be taking the, doing this little spiel, and you turn them into the office. If you have any questions, there's my phone number on the bottom of the thing, and also May Arnett's. Turn them into the office with a check made out to Marcellus First Presbyterian shirts, t-shirts, okay? Any other questions or things I neglected to say? I will be at the, at, uh, out the door after service to collect them if any of you have your checks or have your things ready. Very good. And we have uh, yeah, another announcement. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to let you guys know that we are bringing the youth group back to life. So this morning, I would really like to see the junior and senior high kids, at least, down in the fireside room right after the sermon. We're going to be talking about what this coming year is going to be looking like. And if we have any littles who are here, like elementary school age, I'm not sure if elementary programming is starting today or not. Yes. If not, yes. what is? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> If you guys finish up early and you want to stop down into the fireside room and check in with us too, you're welcome to do that. We can talk a little bit about what some of the activities are that are coming up. So I look forward to seeing at least my junior and senior high kiddos out there in the fireside room after the summer. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Just a couple of announcements. Next Saturday, we're going to have an old home day over in the park, and it's going to start around noon till dusk. And there's going to be a lot of activities. There's going to be food, there's music, there's going to be fireworks. And we've been invited by the Rotary to have our cakewalk. So I'd like to have everybody that wants their cakes bring them between 10 o'clock and noon to the Welcome Center, and we'll be setting up there, and hopefully we'll be having the uh, cakewalk um, starting around noon. And just mark your cakes with your name, phone number, what kind of cake it is. I think that's all I need about the cakewalk. Uh, the other thing is, today we're uh, reinventing our uh, sandwich Sunday. Now, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I say sandwich. Hala says it's sandwich. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be making sandwiches for St. John and St. Peter's uh, Episcopal uh, Soup Kitchen over in Auburn. Our uh, friends Nina and Jerry Wick are volunteers there, and they got in touch with us to tell us that they need sandwiches. So after service, everyone is invited to come on out and join us making sandwiches. Thank you. Where are they going to do that? Shinneman Hall. Thank you. <laughs> Good deal. All righty. Uh, well, just one other thing I want to say before we begin the worship service is, and y'all see it every Sunday on the front of the bulletin, but I'm going to read it again. I used to read it a lot. I, I got out of the habit for some reason, but I'm also going, well, let's see, I'm going to step over here because that's where the camera is, <laughs> just so people know who's talking. But here, everyone is welcome. If you're visiting with us and you're looking for a church where you will be loved and accepted regardless of your age, class, race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, where you will be challenged to reflect on your beliefs, acknowledge your doubts, ask questions, and grow in your faith, where God's desire for compassion, healing, reconciliation, and justice is preached where you are given the opportunity to put your faith into action, you are welcome here. Do I hear an amen? amen? There we go. So we hope to get to know you as a new friend. And thank you for being with us this morning. And we'll continue to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Look at the heavens. The days and the nights declare the magnificence of God's creative works. Let our words of praise be acceptable to you. Our Lord, our God, our
y'all. My eldest son is in New Orleans, so I hear y'all all the time. So good morning, y'all. Here's a call to confession. Let us use our voices to declare those things we have said and done that have separated us from God and from each other, that we may experience God's mercy and receive God's forgiveness. In unison, the prayer of confession. You have yeah, called us, us, O God, and, and we have refused to listen. We have stretched out our hand, and we have not taken it. We have taken what has given us, and used those gifts to serve others and in our ideas. We have refused to be tamed by your wisdom. We have our ability to recognize you and live out the reality of your gospel. Give us the insight we need to understand your place in our lives, so that our words and actions will reflect the glory of your God in the lives of others. In the name of the Messiah, we pray. Amen. The Declaration of Forgiveness. The law of the Lord is perfect. And may the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure. And he makes wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. The commandment of the Lord is clear. And it enlightens the eyes. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, the living word, we are forgiven. Live in peace. first lesson today comes from James 3, verses 1 through 12. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Not many of you should become teachers. Boy, that's a way to open up, isn't it? <laughs> Not many of you should become teachers. My brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses and make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are large, so large, that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is the small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest, how great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird or of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue of a restless spirit, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and curses. 
my brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. invite the children to come forward if we have any that are willing and able Sometimes maybe 
I'm, I'm thinking about something or talking about something, and you might have something to say to me about it. And if I listen, then I can learn from that, and we can learn together. And so that's what we're talking about a lot today is how we learn. So it's, and I also have a whole lot of teachers out there too, just like you guys do, so that we can learn from each other and that we can grow. And when we do that, it, it's one of those things that Jesus did for his disciples. And so it's important for us to be able to learn from others as well. So let's have a little prayer. Can we do this? Y'all ready? We clap our hands and we're going to say, dear, can you repeat after me? Dear God. We thank you for giving us teachers and ways of understanding that help us love you better. Amen. Thank you. So you guys can go that way now. Thank you so much for coming down and joining me. Bye-bye. Have fun. <laughs> You know, camera shyness is a really rough thing. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. <laughs>
and that sounds intriguing to me, and maybe it would be <laughs> something that. that we look towards in the future. Um, if you get a chance, go to the uh, Brady Faith Center website, and um, you'll see what our contribution is helping. Thank you. Wonderful. Please pray with me. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Be our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you're able, please stand with me today as I'm reading the gospel lesson, which comes from Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Jesus went with his disciples to the villages of the Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can, give, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. This is one of those, uh, many texts are like this, but this is one of those texts that really, as the more you read it, the more is there. The more is to be understood, the more is to learn. And so while we think, what can we give? Another way of, of my thinking would be, what can we teach in light of the previous scripture reading? Do we teach of human things or divine things? And what does it even look like? When we teach of human things, our vision tends to be more narrowed and selfish. Now, we might not want to admit it, but isn't that kind of what we hear a lot and we experience a lot? Because we, in society in general, who do we recognize as being successful? The, the person who's raised the most money for a foundation that's helping the poor? Or the person who has the most money and is very proud of it and, and drives the latest sports car. 
Who gets promoted in the news? Who gets the headlines? Typically, it is not the one who is generous. So unfortunately, in many ways, when we think about, when, when, when Christ is saying here about not being involved with human things or what human things are, that's what he's saying is desires of the flesh, desires of the world, um, the latest and greatest in technology and uh, what, whatever can make us feel like we're succeeding more. There's a lady who lost her life savings. She was a retired school teacher and, and was living comfortably, but she was scammed. And so when she lost everything, she went to the Better Business Bureau. And they said, well, yes, ma'am, that is definitely a scam. Why didn't you come? Why didn't you bring this to us? Did you not know about it? She says, no, of course I knew about you. I've, all, I've known about you guys for years and the work that you do and everything. Then why didn't you contact us? Well, I'm afraid you wouldn't suggest that I do that. She wanted to have someone agreeing with her, not challenging her. Someone who was going to say it's okay and it'll be all right and you're going to be wealthy from this rather than that's a really bad idea. That is not where wisdom is in this situation. Our worldly desires quickly outweigh any divine understanding of possibilities. But often we dwell on human things. We become interested in self-promotion. Isn't that what we're always taught is working our way up that corporate ladder no matter what? What that generally does is it starts creating division and building walls between us and others in the community. We start thinking things like, I'm better than this other person. And then we start listing the qualifications because of my color, because of my nationality, because of my education, my gender my gender preference or my identity. I think, oh, well, that makes me better, so I should be promoted because that's my goal in life. That's when we're focusing on human things. That's when we're focusing on things that divide us instead of the unity, the unifying presence of Christ that we know to be part of the divine. And that's where Christ is challenging us. See, by focusing on these human things, we lose sight of the God who unites us with the divine knowledge that we, not just me, we, we, everyone in this community, everyone, we are created equal and in God's own image, each and every one of us. That is to say that no matter gender, gender preference, identity, education, nationality, or color of our skin, we are united through Christ. That is the divine lesson that Christ is teaching us. In that there is love drawn together by the divine wisdom of God that we know through Christ. Divine lessons we know through Christ can include the love of God. Remember, I, I say this a lot. We have the capacity to love because God, exactly. That's where it comes from. That's how we know how to do this. If it wasn't for that, then we would be lost. We would have no idea what a divine love is. But fortunately, every day we know of this divine love. We know of the divine presence of Christ. We know the lesson that Christ is trying to teach these disciples. So with these divine lessons, 
the love of God. Christ teaches compassion for those in need, dining with outcasts, freeing the oppressed, and, you know, we could, we could, the whole New Testament is full of it, right? <laughs> if we look for examples of what it is to be taught this divine lifestyle, we have to look no further than Christ and what Christ does. You don't even have to read his words. Consider what he does. Eating with sinners and outcasts. Sitting with children. Welcoming everyone to the table. But you see, so many ways, these are not actions that would be driven by human things human things become a distraction from what can bring us together it can be a distraction from what makes us followers of christ selfless instead of selfish divine versus human it's really it it sounds like a really simple concept a simple idea but it's hard to get a hold of uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes that Jesus comes in the form of a beggar, of a desolate human child in ragged clothes, asking for help. Jesus confronts you and every person that you meet. As long as there are people, Christ will walk the earth as your neighbor. Wow, that is truly divine. That should change how we see our neighbors. That should change how we experience those who are less fortunate than we are. Because Christ sought to bring all of those on the outskirts of communities, those, what did he do to the lepers? He healed them. <laughs> Why? Oh, so they can be back and, and, and hug their families and be a part of that community. We kind of get an idea now, you know, after a couple of years, of what it's like to be isolated, lacking hugs and, and hellos. We kind of get the idea now. So it comes down to each and every one of us having a choice, a choice of how we proceed. Do we proceed by, by seeing in the eyes of our neighbors the love that Christ has for that person? Or do we see our differences? Can we see our differences and still acknowledge what we have in common? Can we still see, because I don't believe for a minute that, that God is a tall old white man with a beard. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope God is bigger than that. That's putting our minds on things of the divine. God is bigger than our own imagination and our own limitations, than our own trimmings and trappings. So friends, think of that this week when you, whether you're going down here to know James or over here for breakfast. Everyone you bump into along the way Everyone that you see on the, the main roads out here and the sidewalks and things, everyone you meet is a child of God, created in the image of God, loved by God. The same as you, the same as me. Amen.
invite you, if you're able, please stand with me as we say together the Apostles' Creed traditional version, which is found on page 14 in the front of your hymn book. So and now I ask you, friends, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please pray with me. God of love, you gave your only son so that he would undergo great suffering for our sake. Seeing this great suffering, we believe that you understand the sufferings of the world and our own suffering. Believing that you have walked in our footsteps and that you have lived through trials and tribulations, we offer our prayers to you. And Lord, on this yesterday, just the 20th anniversary of such a horrendous attack, we pray, we pray that you would continue to comfort those who still mourn, bring peace to where there's war, that we can find ways to connect as a community, to cease all war and find unity as your people. We pray for wisdom that we can communicate effectively with love, shalom, and compassion, and strive to live in connectedness and understanding. We pray for courage so that we can live out our faith, giving witness with our words and actions that you are the Messiah. We pray for the will to take up the cross and follow wherever you may lead. And we pray for love, your love in us so that we can live with the intentionality to know each other by name and have the deep relationships that you want us to have with you and with each other. All these things we pray through Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, God has given us the Son and made us stewards of all creation. God has given us our lives and our very beings. So let us give to God from what God has given to us. I'm just reminding everyone, we uh, have the offering plates up front here as well as in the narthex. You also may drop them in the mail. Uh, there's also an opportunity to give online uh, on our main website. So with that, let us receive. offerings 
guide us as we administer the gifts you have given us. In Jesus Christ. when people ask who is this Jesus do not be ashamed of the gospel share with them that he loved the world so much he lived for it he suffered for us died for us and rose again for us and then invite them to follow and now may God of our of wisdom pour out God's thoughts in you and make God's word known to you May Jesus Christ, our Messiah, give you the strength to carry your cross and to follow him. And may the Holy Spirit, our tongue of fire, guide our words and our actions as we strive to bless the world with our witness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.